Oh, and hey everybody, it's me, Brandon here, and I'm gonna be, today I'm gonna be explaining about why I like no other million Lucina from Fire Emblem Awakening and Rogue of the X-Men. As well as, and I guess you can count Jacko Valentine from Guilty Gear, the Exod Revelator, as a fourth. But yeah, I'm gonna be explaining why I like those, those guys. You know what? Select our annoy. Now then. And, okay, first off, no other man. And I really like how Noelle developed throughout the series. Like, she started out this timid girl who was working for the NOL because her family was. It was down on their luck. And it turns out she's actually a prime, he's not even human, she's a prime fear device who was actually the clone of the main girl to rock into the Blood Edge's sister. Oh, well, rock into the Blood Edge and Jin King's loyalty, sister Sire. But she's also connected to something called the Amaterasu unit. Long story short, she's basically the god of the Blaze Blue universe. To put it short, and at the end of Central Fiction, she rejoins with her other half. Well, her two other halves. Izanami and Amaterasu. Oh, the girl inside Amaterasu. Oh, I like it. And, well, I just fuck. I mean, ooh, how she becomes. And she becomes a lot more confident in herself. Oh, I, Oh, especially in Corner Phantasma. I feel like that's more of. It. it Sissy, a good chunk of Corner Phantasma story is basically her accepting the fact that she isn't human and, and that she's Mew 12, the, her prime field name. And, and her basically accepting that and, and coming to grips and embracing it. She does kind of backpedal in central fiction, but that's only because she ends up. Uh, she is. Uh, she willingly split us. He created this world, split herself up, just so Terry wouldn't open the gate. As expected, that backfires horribly, but in typical Blaze Blue fashion, that backfires horribly. But after that, she comes to accept that she's... Uh, but she does get herself back at near the end. And also, except the fact that she's basically a clone of Ragnar's sister. He even starts calling him brother halfway. He even goes as far as start calling him brother. Second is her fighting style. Her Nox Nectoris, basically weapons of the Blaze Blue series that went on Se on Osmagus, which was made from Seether from the Black Beast on the Dark War. It's, it's a long story, I don't have time to get into. Also, in short, her weapon's basically a bunch of gu- it basically two guns. It, it basically two guns that can transform into different weapons like a minigun, a sniper rifle, you name it. And you know what gun kata is, right? Gung Fu? You know, John Woo? If anyone's heard of John Woo, you've heard of Gun Fu? That's basically how Noel fights. She fights using. She fights using in Bulwark, her guns, and in, in addition to kicks, in addition to kicks, she basically uses Gung Fu, which is pretty badass in its own right, and in her move on, she summons these little mini turrets that far run and shoot enemies as well as great giant swords, capable of, that I believe are capable of slicing the planet in half. Though, it hasn't really been confirmed how strong those blades are, but they're pretty freaking powerful. Oh, but... Yeah. Third reason. She's just so cute. I ain't gonna lie, she's freaking adorable. Oh, especially when she gets a... Especially since she's kind of, she kind of uh, fills in the, air, the blonde airhead stereotype. 
but in a way that's endearing instead of annoying. Since most of her clutchiness is due to her losing her memory. Or, or having not or not having any memory whatsoever. Literally, most of the bikes we see is actually centered around her just excelling her powers. But Oh man, Freeze is giving Goku the business. Oh, where was I? Oh yeah. Anyway. A her stupidity is more of well, the fact that she's shy. Really, really shy. Not uh, she's not stupid, but she's not the bright she's not the br at the beginning of the series, she's not the brightest bulb. Oh, if you know what I mean. And, well, yeah. Uh, now, fortunately, as she becomes more confident, this kind of dies down on a little. Uh, this kind of dies, this dies down, and she becomes a lot more confident. She's still at the brightest bulb up on the ceiling, but... She's at least a little smarter. Smart enough to split herself into two halves so that Tommy doesn't open the gate. To Amaterasu, because that's his plan. And, and she becomes a very p a powerful member. Which is also why I really want to see a death match be between her and Igus. Because I have the thing she would crush Igus from Persona from the Persona series. He's in a in one in one on one combat. And since her, she's able, her powers are, are for reasons that her powers are, but yeah, the chart. She has the ability to observe, as in see things that can't usually be seen. And she can basically create her own dimension out of dreams, because the, it's said that the girl inside the Amaterasu unit is Noelle's other half, and she made an entire dream world just because she, she won. The bad memories to stop. I believe that's what she, why she did it, but still, she created an entire dream world. I know this is all Amaterasu, but considering that it was confirmed that it, the girl inside it was technically you Noel, know, I have to say, it, I, I, I'm gonna count that as a Noel feat. <laughs> hey, which, and a kind of development to. It's also made it very tragic when she first became a Mew, a Mew 12 because... Oh, well, Freeza's near death. Oh, Freeza's near death. But now all Boo's gotta do is land at least one good hit. Anyway, what was I? Oh yeah, it made it really tragic when Tammy turned into Mew 12 for the first time and made it... And made it all the one with leaving when Ragnar finally saved her. Uh, so, you know. And then for her to basically. And then for her to basically. Be, accept what she is. It's pretty in there. Finally, her voice actor. She's voiced by Christina V. For anyone who knows, she's a singer. And I can. And every time. I don't know why, but always Christine V is kind of a good fit for her. I really wish no one sang in the series, especially since Central Fiction has no English dub. Yeah, kind of bummed me out about that. Yeah, that kind of bummed me out, but eh. But eh. That's what happens. That's eh. Hey, stuff happens sometimes. Alright, I'm just about done with the way here, but I... But I gotta mention one more thing. In... The f... Her eyes are usually green, but the mo when, but when she uses her powers and when she's in her Mew 12 form, her eyes turn blue. I always thought that was a pretty nice touch. Anyway, moving on to Lucina. I was kind of spoiled on her existence before buying Awakening. 
Yes, I did not buy Awakening until after it had been out for a while. And so I was kind of already spoiled on who she was. Somewhat. Jeez. Oh no, I'm just looking at it. It's because cool because Freeze took down two two of the fighters and coolers and only now is cooler up. I anyway, mean, back to Lucina. Uh, basically, I was kind of spoiled on her existence somewhat. So, yeah. I think. I barely remember it. Because I had barely even heard of this game until I actually got, I got it. It was only after I bought it when I started getting all the information on, on it. Anyway, she comes back from the future uh, that has been sacked thanks to Crom dying and Grima being in released. Grima being the giant evil dragon. Anyway, and she goes back in time to prevent this. She kind of fails in preventing Emran's death. Though, granted, it Emran's death was that ended up being on her own and Emran's own terms. But still, she kind of did prevent. Lucian, it did kind of prevent, and it kind of failed in preventing Edmund's death. And she also failed at, and she also failed at preventing Grima from being awakened. But she didn't succeed in, in making sure her father lived, because they ba because basically her other crime and and his friends basically, and Robin basically states the whole killing thing. But turns out he was alive the whole time just to fool. Well, Violet, not the guy who was trying to revive Grimm in the first place. It's as well, Grimm was like, okay, this failed, so no, I gotta do it myself. Okay. She is very suspicious of the Avatar. Especially after she, she finds out oh, that Violet has control over the guy. Oh, girl. Has control over them. And she's like, you're my father's killer. Which is con kind of confirmed to be true at the beginning. And which makes it and it get and it gets and she actually tries to kill them at one point, which acts, but it gets a lot more personal if you either marry Lucina or become Lucina's mother. They all marry crime and become Lucina's mother because she's gotta because one if she's got because in one scenario she's gotta do with killing her mother, you know the person that gave her life, and the other one she's gotta. Do, Deal with her lover. She has to deal with try, trying to kill her lover. Both times, she can't bring herself to do it. And Annie, she can't bring herself to do it. And eventually, she does. Oh, she is a bit weird since you know. She can. She, since she did grow up in a bad future and everything, so she doesn't really know, know how to do anything else but fight. She's kind of like Vegeta in that sense. Doesn't really know how to do anything but fight, but but unlike Vegeta, she at least tries. At least to have some fun and actually succeeds. And it's also kind of unhinted that she couldn't go back to the future since she just left somewhere... To go somewhere else after the events of Awakening. Which actually brings me up to Smash Bros. Maybe she was walking around and got an invitation to Smash Bros. And like, hmm, let's see what this is about. Because she is fighting Captain Falcon in the Ferex Arena. In her trailer, so. Speaking of Smash Bros. I love how they actually made her capture her personality. And love that they actually gave her own character slot instead of making her a palette up of Moth. Speaking of Moth, she's his descendant, and well, and well, she disguised herself as him, and she disguised herself as him, and to bolster her hope open up in people. And she fights the same as a father Krom. We, um, we're even wielding the same sword. 
Which brings me to the second reason I like her, her design. 